A former intelligence official has claimed that the U.S. government has been covering up a long-standing defense program which collects and reverses engineers' UFOs. The former U.S. official has claimed that non-human biologics were found at an alleged UFO crash site. In a historic congressional hearing on Thursday, lawmakers have applied pressure on the executive branch to reveal more information about these UFOs. The House Oversight Committee's National Security Subcommittee has gathered testimony from three key witnesses. These witnesses have first-hand knowledge of how the government has handled reports of strange encounters with the UFOs. Individuals have called on American government to be more transparent about the UAPs and also warned that these unidentified objects are a security threat. UFOs have been a subject of heightened security scrutiny as well, following an increase in reported sightings by military personnel and pilots over recent years. Although extraterrestrial life has been shrouded in stigma, confusion, secrecy, lawmakers on both sides of the political divide have been rallying around the push for more research on the topic as a national security matter. I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program, uh, to which I was denied access to those additional read-ons when I uh, requested it. I made the decision, based on the data I collected, to report this information to my superior, superiors and multiple inspectors general and in effect becoming a whistleblower. As you know, I've suffered retaliation for my decision, uh, but I am hopeful that my actions will ultimately lead uh, to a positive outcome of uh, increased transparency. Uh, I have to be careful what I say in detail because there is an open uh, whistleblower reprisal investigation on my behalf, and I don't want to compromise that investigation by providing anything that may uh, uh, help provide somebody <laughs> information, but it was very brutal and uh, very unfortunate, some of the tactics they used to um, hurt me both professionally and, and personally, to be quite frank. As we looked around, we noticed that we saw some white water off our right side. It's important to note that the weather on this day was as close to the perfect as you could ask for off the coast of San Diego. Clear skies, light winds, calm seas, no white caps from waves. So the white water stood out in a large blue ocean. All four of us, because we were in F-18Fs, so we had pilots and Wizzo in the back seat, looked down a small, saw a white tic-tac object with a longitudinal axis pointing north-south and moving very abruptly over the water like a ping-pong ball. As we pulled nose onto the object within about a half mile of it, it rapidly accelerated in front of us and disappeared. Our wingmen, roughly 8,000 feet above us, lost contact also. We immediately turned back to see where the white water was at, and it was gone also. So as you started to turn back towards the east, the controller came up and said, sir, you're not going to believe this, but that thing is at your cat point roughly 60 miles away in less than a minute. You can calculate the speed. We returned to Nimitz. We were taking off our gear. We were talking to one of my crews that was getting ready to launch. We mentioned it to them. And they went out and luckily got the video that you see, that 90-second video. In 2014, I was an F-18 Foxtrot pilot in the Navy Fighter Attack Squadron 11, the Red Rippers and I was stationed at NAS Oceana in Virginia Beach. After upgrades were made to our jet's radar systems, we began detecting unknown objects operating in our airspace. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be five to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned to base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Soon, these encounters became so frequent that aircrew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight briefs. Pilots are reporting UAP at altitudes that appear above them at 40,000 feet, potentially in low Earth orbit or in the gray zone below the Kármán line making inexplainable maneuvers like right-hand turns and retrograde orbits or J-hooks. Sometimes these reports are reoccurring with numerous recent sightings north of Hawaii. Right now we need a system where pilots can report without fear of losing their jobs. Uh, there is a fear that the stigma associated with this topic is going to lead to professional repercussions either through management or perhaps through their yearly physical check.